The Beautiful People of Kenya Caribou Kenya, a country that boasts abundant wildlife, beautiful foliage, and amazing sightseeing opportunities. Young bananas can be found anywhere, from street side to behind your hostel. Just one of the fruits that taste so naturally sweet, nothing like what we have in the States. Initially, still being a foreigner, we do what the tourists do. What's a visit to Kenya if it doesn't involve a friendly kiss from a giraffe? A bus tour of the city of Nairobi, so rich with stories, though Kenya is relatively young, viewing a park that was saved by a woman who was willing to take a stand in a country where women do not have a very loud voice, yet. The view from my home for the next three and a half months. Toy Market, the common ground of Adams Arcade and Kibera, only too recently was flame set by the 2009 post-election violence the remnants of which still remain and loom in the memories as the next election day slowly near. Just a seven-minute walk from Toy, the luxury of Nairobi Java House, only for the lucky who can afford it and the tourists, who need a taste of home. I had that need often enough, but couldn't help but think about those for whom it will never be an option. Those who live here, in Kibera, the ultimate visual of poverty. Welcome, Senator reads this entrance to a compound. Behind this door lives only a minuscule portion of those 600,000 in the largest slum in East Africa. Walking through paths paved with trash and sewage, dogs and cats and chickens roam covered in flies. Chants of, hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. Follow us from the children, running up to us, just wanting to touch our hands to get a little bit of attention. The fortunate ones have some opportunity. Kibera School for Girls, an American nonprofit, teaching the girls there is hope, there is a way out of Kibera. Eight hours away, rural poverty is introduced. Shirazi, a coastal village right on the water. People live off the land, they live off the water. Majority Muslim, our new Shirazi mamas take very good care of us, dress us up in their best clothes every morning before we leave the house for class. A short boat ride away, the waterway meets the Indian Ocean. Paradise lost is a paradise indeed. Beautiful sand, clear blue water, seashells galore, a visitor's dream. Unappealing to those who live there, too excessive, and a waste of time. Nothing to be gained from that. More important is the family, the house, the food, living on very little money, earning it any way they can. Youngsters collect fallen coconuts, watch animals, fetch milk, find karosha or cashew nuts. Roasting the delicious treat helps me see what a tedious task it is, from collecting the raw fruit to roasting them until ready, then hitting them with rocks to expose the nut. But be careful, the nuts are fragile and only experts like my four-year-old brother Kay can get them out whole. Jumbo, jumbo buana, habari yetu, mzuri sana, wageni, mwakari bishwa, shirazi yetu, hakuna matata. A song taught to me by my family and sung often, letting me know I'm always welcome in shirazi. We were invited to a wedding. In preparation for the event, I put henna on my arms. After it was done, I learned that only married women get henna. Just one more reason, it's important to be aware of the culture you're immersed in. By the end of my time with my Shirazi family, I was learned enough to help with the cooking. The best tea I've ever had with freshly ground herbs is in the making one last time before I leave. Missing my rural family and back in the city, I attend an urban soccer game. We think Carolina and Clemson have a rivalry. Well, Gormaya and the Leopards' bad blood runs deeper than sports. It's blood deep. It's a tribal issue. I experience Kitoa Machozi, tear gas, and make it to the national newspaper. This was a rivalry game, and we were warned. Tear gas at a football game is pretty normal. Strange how what we use in warfare is used to calm sports fans elsewhere. Meeting Kenyan rappers on the streets of Nairobi. The city is so alive with its three million people. Octopizo, known through Africa, enjoys meeting Americans. He says we're good PR. A Mzungu, or white person, is always good for something. Spring break in Tanzania.
spring break of a lifetime. Living with Maasai in traditional homes, learning yet another tribe's culture, merely scratching the surface, only one of the 42 in Kenya. Living off the land in a rural setting, making toothbrushes from trees and finding chewing gum in roots, using everything available and wasting nothing. So resourceful, so aware, nothing like the place I call home. Supai, the greeting expected along with touching the head. Children respect their elders, just as adults respect theirs. Although shy at first, kids enjoy a game of cat and mouse. I try to high-five a young boy as he quickly moves his hands away. Before leaving, I experience some of Tanzania's sights. I hike up to the first point of the famous Mount Kilimanjaro, test my physical ability, after months of Ugali and Sukuma Wiki. A taste I miss, and for some reason, just can't seem to recreate it just right. It's amazing to see such lush and vibrant life in a place with so much corruption and disease and death. A place that can boast many of the world's largest organisms. The baobab tree, the biggest on earth. The African elephants, rhinos, and hippos. But it can barely provide for most of its people. How much more generous must the land be than humanity? They say the earth can't feel, yet we see the wonders it is capable of every day and look past them. We see what it can provide. I see how underutilized it is in the States, how unappreciated. As I fly home over the Swiss Alps, yet another beautiful sight, I remember and appreciate the beautiful sights, the beautiful people of Kenya.